Everybody, it's Tyler We're here down in Texas checking in at the Waco event with team number 66M2 World Champions Fusion Core. Uh, this robot this year, by the way, looks absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to go through all the different components and mechanisms. They got some really interesting things that is more than meets the eye with the robot as well. So I can't wait to talk about, of course, uh, we'll talk about some areas on their chassis. A gorgeous arm, by the way. I love the intake that they have and some controls that we'll be going through as well, too. And I can't wait to talk more about this team coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on, real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the World Championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see locations you can meet at Kettering University representative. The Charged Up competition season is here, and we have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, analysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Gabe, let's start out on your chassis here. You guys got some interesting uh, spots that you were telling me earlier in regards to getting some driver feedback, uh, even reversal bumpers, a few other things too. So walk me through uh, what's going on down here. Yeah, so first to start with the chassis, we have a 40 pound ballast, which is comprised of the metal steel pan and also a metal bar that's below this wire cover. Then um, we also have these LED lights that diffract on the side panels to indicate to the human player whether we want a cube or a cone. Uh, also, a cool feature about the bumper is that it's reversible. Easily swap in between from red to blue. Nice. Vice versa. I got to ask you on the 40 pound ballast, I've talked to quite a few teams. 40 pounds might be the most I've heard from a team yet so far. So when you were looking at uh, analyzing uh, for your team, why was 40 pounds the optimal amount for you? Well, I mean, we just built the robot as light as possible so we could have a low center of gravity. And later, just like with the extra weight that we had, we just put it down in the bottom. So how heavy are you without ballast then? Without ballast, 80 pounds. Okay, so you're at that 120 with the uh, with the ballast in it then, huh? Yeah. So very cool. I love hearing about the driver uh, feedback as well, too. We're going to keep moving on, talking to James a bit more in regards to the uh, intake uh, that you have. And I love the uh, just the aesthetic pocketing even on this as well, too. But it looks like a uh, very well-built intake. Talking about uh, how you came up with this design, maybe any other iterations you went through, and then how you're tackling it from a strategic standpoint. Yeah, so a big focus for our team when it came to our intake was simplicity and modularity. Our design is heavily inspired by both Vector and Spectrums. Um, it's a one size fit all, so this intakes both cones and cubes. We eliminated any handoff going on, and we made it incredibly light, these lightning holes you were just mentioning here. But also, in regards to modularity, it is hot swappable, so we have extra intakes built in oh, case nice. we need to take these off, replace it with another one. Talking about one size fits all, can I get the cone position? And then, and then our ball position is just a little bit higher than that, and so it pinches the tip of the cube. That's pretty cool, by the way, having it come in right here. I honestly, when I first saw this, was expecting the cube to come through right here and not here as well, too. When you were looking at design-wise, how did you come up and saying, hey, we want both the game pieces to come through these pinch points here? Weight was a big issue for us and we wanted to reduce that as much as possible. Sure. This tube is carbon fiber to help reduce that, but adding another roller and more gears and pulleys would have been too much for us, and so we were trying to find a way to reduce that as much as possible. So we landed on just the two roller design uh, for those reasons. Let's keep moving on talking about the arm a little bit more and what's gone into that. Uh, Ryan, uh, looking at this, uh, it looks just like a well-built uh, structure that you have for this, of course, holding uh, onto uh, the uh, gripper as well, too, with a nice little wrist uh, thing there. So talk to me about the uh, elevator or tower mechanism that you have and the superstructure for it. Yes, so the first week of the build season, we were actually just going to start building the arm. We wanted to get ahead as soon as possible, and we had some rev-ion tube in the lab. So we got the arm together. Uh, it didn't look this nice, um, but Revion was super useful in us prototyping and iterating very fast. So we got the arm uh, working, and then we got what we call the bicep moving. 
Um, so we have a bicep gearbox, which is underneath this panel down here. Sure. And then we have the forearm gearbox up here. And the good thing about the forearm gearbox is that it's actually a counterbalance for the arm. That way we didn't have to add extra weight up high. Yeah. We could use the same weight that we were already going to have. Um, and so that went uh, well for us. One problem we did have was we had a lot of slop in the arm. There was a lot of variance in uh, where it would end up. So we had about 15 degrees of variance. So how we fixed that is we actually just used a gear ratio. So we increased the sprocket size down here and it eliminated it by half of what it was. And now it's pretty much negligible. So we're very proud of this arm and we attribute its simplicity to how fast we could prototype it. Um, we did design it so that we could go through the robot. That was a huge thing that we wanted to do. If we could pick up uh, from one side and not have to turn around, it would make it really fast for us. Um, and I will say we were inspired by 254's robot in 2018, yeah. going through their robot. Um, so we're really proud of it, and it's helping us on our cycle times, for sure. I was going to ask you about the, the kind of the passer almost for something like that, and it's cool to hear the inspiration uh, behind that as well. Uh, next, I want to go over to Andrew, talking about uh, controls wise the robot. I know we're going to be talking about some of the different positions uh, that have gone into this. and. I just love this. I love to see this arm work. It's just such a slick arm. So talk to me more about some of your position control and anything else from a controls and programming standpoint. Yeah. So we use almost entirely motion magic to control the arm. We decided to go with a very simple uh, set of logic to control the arm all the way through. Basically, the way it works is before we move the bicep any, we want to make sure our wrist is all the way stowed. So this is a stowed position right here. And then once we're confident that it's stowed, we feel comfortable moving it through the robot. So for example, when I'm going to an intake position here, and then I ask it to return to stowed, it brings the wrist up and then comes back with the arm. The main reason we did this is we wanted one driver to be able to control all of the arm for simplicity. So this was a big part of that. In addition, we also track the last game piece the driver in took. So for example, I'm gonna bring the intake down here. If we were to intake a cube, and then we were to bring the arm to the mid scoring position, instead of going all the way up, we can just pop the cube into mid quickly which is also improving our cycle times. So we're very happy with it overall. As we start to wrap up, I got to ask you guys uh, from last year, world champions uh, coming in to this year as well too. How would you describe uh, in a quick nutshell that experience of uh, winning the world championship and how does it kind of uh, change your perspective in regards to this season and beyond as well too? So it was an incredible experience to win, but obviously new year, new bot. Um, we didn't want to go in with the expectation of, oh, now we have to win again. Uh, that's not the point of first for us. Sure. Uh, it's for all of us to learn and get these experiences. So it was awesome for us to win, but that's not what it's about for us. Now, what happened? We were talking earlier. You said you're going for three years in a row for, for world championships. So. <laughs> that's off the camera. Oh, okay, for sure. That's off here. Nobody pay attention to that. So, uh, but Fusion Core, congratulations first off on world championship win for that. Uh, this year's row, by the way, I love the design overall. Uh, simplistic in the ways it should be, and it has some great complexity. I think that will really work well for your team. So, thanks a lot. Good luck here at this competition and also future ones beyond. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on, real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the World Championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see locations you can meet a Kettering University representative. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.